Hey guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, I had one of those days where your years of troubleshooting experience are going to pay off in case of an emergency. And today's emergency was uh, this guy right here. My uh, mini split air conditioning system wasn't turning on and it was out of nowhere. It was the craziest thing. Um, so immediately, the, by the way, let me give you a little backstory. This mini split here is plugged into 120 volt on the external of this garage. So it's just 120 volt. But that also means that it's also attached to a GFCI someplace. And if you guys have seen my video on GFCIs, I, I if you haven't, I highly suggest you guys check it out because it will talk you through a little bit about what's going on with those systems. But I went around and I checked all my GFCIs throughout my house because many houses, the GFCIs for the garage are attached to other outlets, other places around the property. And unfortunately, this house is just one of them that like some bathroom or some some uh, external outlets got a GFCI someplace could be on the front of the house is controlling one of the circuits in this garage. It's it's some weird stuff like that. But anyway, I checked all my GFCIs they all appeared to be just fine so and, and i regularly go around and check my gfcis um i do have a gfci uh leakage inducer uh you know it's a little plug um in fact here i know i have some of those right over here i have of course more than my share of test equipment there we go so there are this style right here, GFCI uh, inducers, but also we've got this style right here. You can see GFCI test. Boop. And what that does is it creates a leakage between uh, neutral and ground. And if there's any uh, current on the ground, your GFCI trips. That's what it's designed to do, um, which means that it shuts off. Well, my little Leo lav right here told me that that outlet that it's plugged into is in fact still live. So, I actually put this guy to the test today uh, using both the um, line detection, which is uh, there's a sensor up here in the tip that can detect when there is uh, high voltage. So just using that, I didn't even have to open up certain things, but um, I did open up my, um, my base unit, which is outside. And uh, the reason I opened that up is because uh, you wanna check those connections. You know, uh, regardless, whenever there's a problem, I check both ends of a power cord to make sure that both ends are serviceable. And uh, it's hardwired to the 120 volt um, plug in. And I was like, okay, well, um, I don't have any voltage there. So uh, I switched the Leolov from smart mode over to AC just to be sure in case there's some trace current, some trace voltage that. Uh, I was unsure of and uh, I checked it again and uh, no voltage. I'm like, okay, well, this is interesting. I went and I pulled the plug and started checking out. You see right here what happened. Come on. It's clearly not having a good day, my phone. So you can see that there was some moisture that got in around this guy. So apparently I've got to do a better job of uh, isolating it, but the important thing that I want you guys to see is that there are electrical hazards absolutely everywhere. And you can see how I, I really don't like these plug ends. But this is the one that came with the unit. And um, unfortunately, you can see that what happened is some moisture or something got in there. And it started arcy sparking. And someplace in here is a failure. Now, I really don't care where. I assume, look at right here at the crimp. Look at that. It looks like a hole burned in it. So that is my problem, was this right here. And uh, you notice that I didn't reuse it. I didn't reuse it because for one, I already said that I dislike those kind of connectors, but uh, also because I had some better options. And uh, one of my better options was uh, Hubble. So this style right here. This is a hospital grade uh, plug and notice how it's kind of sealed from the elements. Whereas this one right here, look at all those points of possible entry for uh, fluid and moisture, even on the back right here. 
So this one was definitely not the correct plug-in for uh, being outside. Not that this one is a huge amount better, but uh, there is a lip right here that seals it much, much better. And obviously the crimp is much better. Um, so that's what I ended up putting on it was a Hubble. And uh, notice how I trimmed the line back a little distance. See copper, when copper gets hot, it will, uh, it basically affects the line going back quite a ways. And if I were to cut this right up flush here, especially closer to the burn, you're probably gonna see some discoloration and discoloration could lead to more bad connections even in the new plug-in. So always cut your cord back a little bit. This was my first cut. I cut another inch or so off after that. Um, basically I wanted to check the lines to see you know, if in fact the whole cord was damaged. So I cut it here and then I cut it another inch and uh, that's where I re-terminated it for my replacement Hubble brand plug-in. So anyway guys, um, this is just one of those times where uh, troubleshooting because it, today it was like 100 degrees out and uh, my garage heats up very quick and uh, this is my workshop as well. So I do a lot of stuff out here including um, dinking around with medical equipment and whatnot. But that just goes to show you that having a good, quick, inexpensive, easy to use multimeter. And uh, I really dig that uh, that non-contact voltage detection. That was really cool because it allows you to troubleshoot way quicker. And the only thing that I, I know of that's even quicker than that is that fluke power stick. It's the, you know, they call it the chicken stick, which is a, which is basically the, uh, let's see, do I have one of those? I bet you I do. And let's see, I know I've got plenty of uh, test equipment floating around here. I don't know where they are at the moment, uh, probably uh, in my tool bag. But guys, having those skill sets, I cannot tell you enough. Um, know your house, know AC power, um, and know your troubleshooting because you can see right here, that would have been a very dangerous situation and probably could have led to an electrical fire. Sucks, but keeping an inexpensive multimeter at home um, because you never know when you could use one and it might save you from an electrical fire like this or a 100 degree day without air conditioning. Ugh. So guys, just to let you know, uh, my Leolov MT2202 saved the day today and uh, quickly led me to this fault right here. And notice I have air conditioning. It's wonderful. I appreciate this.